Hello everyone, welcome back, welcome to my channel. My name is Lauren and I make videos a couple of times a week about books and fandom things. Sorry about the noise of the fan, hopefully it won't be too ridiculously annoying and hopefully it's okay but I can't not have it on and obviously it is blowing my hair everywhere so like I'm so sorry but it's just so hot and it's, it's so hot and so sticky. So I actually wanted to start doing wrap ups again in June. I was going to do like a wrap up because it was Pride Month and I was planning on reading loads of books in June and then I wasn't very well and didn't end up doing that. So I'm going to do a June slash July wrap up now. I know it's like the middle of August but that's was not technically the middle of August, not just yet. But we're going to do one anyway and then from then on I'm going to be doing monthly wrap ups even though it's too hot at the minute for me to concentrate on anything other than the fact that I am sweating. So in June, I actually only ended up reading two books. So the first book that I actually read in June was Queer Sissy by Peter Ackroyd. This is a account of gay London from the Roman times to now. This book first was ever published in 2017, so from the Roman times to 2017. And it talks about all different areas of London and different aspects of London and London history and I thought it was pretty interesting. It wasn't as good as I thought it was going to be. Ultimately I need to update my Goodreads because I'm really bad at updating my Goodreads but I give this a 3 out of 5 stars. I did think it was really interesting and I think that it gave a really interesting account of London's history. It shows how history has evolved over time. History from the last 50, 60 years where LGBT plus people have obviously, that's been a really big time for movement and fighting for rights and for gay, being gay to not be criminalised and then also for gay marriage to be legal and it is a really interesting account of all over the years and that fight to get into where we are now and we have come so far as a country it's really important to remember what everyone fought for and the fact that there was this huge fight it's a really interesting discussion of history and our history and learning about our history but then also thinking about lots of things and thinking about the fights that are still needed to happen so I enjoyed it in that sense but it wasn't as like amazing as I thought it was going to be because there were just a couple of things that just uh, not that like it didn't sit right with me but just a couple of things which I just thought like that could have maybe been explored a little bit better or written a little bit better um, but I do really like the concept and I do really think it was an interesting discussion and it made me want to go and research more about London's history. It's so important to remember, you know, I think a lot of people do take it for granted and actually to be fair like a lot of straight people are like, well, you know, gay people can do this now, they can get married, blah blah blah, but it's actually not just that because there is still a real fight happening and, and fear happening and how much it took to get there and, and real threats that still exist and this did touch upon those as well which I think is really good. Then in June going into July because this is a big boy and it took me a little while to read we have The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt. This was my first ever Donna Tartt book and I've had it for a really long time and I just never got around to picking it up and then when I was in pain with my jaw and I didn't really know what I was doing and I was just kind of like chilling in bed all the time and just not really doing much I decided to pick up The Goldfinch. The focus is on Theo Decker and when he was 13 him and his mum go to a museum and they end up in the midst of a terrorist attack and his mum ends up dying whilst he ends up surviving. He then lives with the family of a rich friend that he has for a little bit then he moves in with his dad and then lots of things happen that leads him to a life of art and art dealing and not so necessarily legal art dealing. So when the attack happened there was a man there with him and the man was dying and he, what well, Theo thinks, that the man told him to take a painting of the goldfinch which actually is a real painting that really exists and has been through a very wild history um, and then also gave him a ring and told him an address to go to. So Theo takes this painting which is a multi-million dollar painting, like it is a very famous painting, been through lots in the past, has this painting and lots of things have happened with it and then obviously it becomes something that is missing and Theo holds onto it a lot 
over time. What I did appreciate is that I do understand that this is a link to grief. The It is an exploration of grief. It is a very interesting exploration of grief as well. I, and I very much openly talk about how important I think books about grief are um, and the way that the different books can explore different measures of grief. But the end of this book, I just felt like... <sighs> I feel like it ended too neatly for what had happened and that when Theo ends up going on his little trip and it kind of just ends like a little bit too neatly in my opinion I thought like the realities of the illegal art trade world not that I know because I'm obviously not part of it but like I can imagine it's very interesting and possibly a little bit difficult um, and it just felt like it was just all kind of neatly wrapped up with a bow not much happened and then a lot happened all at once and then it was very neatly wrapped up so I think I gave this book 3.5 stars because I did really like the very style and I did find the whole range of characters very interesting and I thought that it was good and I did enjoy it and I'm really glad that I read it because it was interesting but I just don't think it like lived up to oh my god this is the goldfinch kind of level which I was fully expecting from a book this big and a book as complex as it was but ultimately I did just find the ending just fell a little bit flat um but yeah I read the goldfinch I find I read the goldfinch and I'm so proud of myself for actually reading this whole book this whole book I sat and I read this whole book and it took a long time like over the course of two months but I did it and then I dropped it in the bath and it's wrinkly on the end <laughs> um but I did it okay so then on to July so in July I finally finished the five by I've never actually seen the cut like by uh Helly Ribbonhold and I actually haven't seen like the, the cover I bought the physical copy because I was listening to the audiobook over a span of a couple of months and this is a non-fiction book and it is actually the five victims of Jack the Ripper or the five kind of confirmed victims of Jack the Ripper and their lives before they were a victim of him because it's a or what to be fair I have a theory that Jack the Ripper was a woman but we're not going to get into that like but like whoever Jack the Ripper was they had a whole life and families and stories and a whole existence before that was taken away from them by whoever it was that so brutally killed them and this was very interesting it gave me an entirely new perspective on the whole thing and it made me just it's so hard it like it really is hard because like the whole Jack the Ripper who was Jack the Ripper this whole conspiracy and this whole discussion around it has become such a big thing that I think the world tends to forget that five women lost their lives because of Jack the Ripper and ultimately this is a crime it is true crime and I do watch and read a lot of true crime and it does fascinate me from a psychological standpoint I have two degrees in psychology it interests me but I do also think it's really important that we remember that it is someone's life that was taken away or someone's life that was so awfully destroyed and this is a very interesting perspective because obviously it shows us who these women were outside of just being known as a victim of Jack the Ripper and it really just gives a perspective on the fact that their lives were taken away from them and then also what life was like back in the 1800s which was just discussed the way that women were treated the things that men could get away with that women could not and the way the women were treated was just so unfair just to the point because they were women and you know so many of these women I don't think would have been in, in the situation that they were in and I don't think they would have had their lives taken away from them if the system had not failed them just because they were women and this is very important this is a really really good book four out of five stars and would 100% recommend and then I finally finally got around to reading the second book in the Magnus Chase series this is Magnus Chase and the Hammer of Thor I have started the final book in the series now as well um so I will hopefully have that finished this month which I'm really excited for because then I can move on to Trials of Apollo hopefully just in time for the fifth and final book of the Trials of Apollo series to come out. This is set in Rick Riordan's like 
Percy universe. Magnus Chase is actually the cousin of Annabeth Chase. And this ends, this book ends with Percy and Annabeth in it. And the third and final book in this series starts with Percy, with Magnus and Annabeth. And I love the whole thing. And we got introduced to Alex in this book. And I absolutely adore them. Alex is genuinely one of my favourite Rick characters and I just think that Rick did an absolutely amazing job with the uh, non-binary transgender representation and Alex as a character. To, obviously Alex is a child of Loki and then Loki is also said to be very gender fluid in a lot of sort of stories of Loki and retellings of Loki and then I just yeah I really love that um, and I also really loved more of Loki and seeing more of Loki and seeing kind of this very evil kind of side because Loki is a really complex character and I think that that's done really well. And I just really love kind of Magnus's commentary on the whole thing because Magnus lives in a world in which the Marvel movies are a thing, if you know what I mean, which, which I think is really interesting. Like I really love that kind of, those kind of ties because it's like, yes, Magnus lives in a world where there are many stories of these people that he's now meeting and it's, and so are we because we also live in a world in which there's many stories of the people that Magnus is meeting and I just, I don't know, there's something kind of a little bit meta about that and I'm just absolutely loving this series I love Magnus and I adore Sam and I adore Alex as well, absolutely love absolutely love them. So then there was the reading rush and I did one vlog for the reading rush and then I never uploaded the second part because lots of things happened in regards to the reading rush and I didn't address it in my video and I um, already scheduled the video to go up and I just thought I'd rather step away from that and I don't think that I'm gonna be taking part in the reading rush in any future years. Um, I didn't actually end up completing the reading rush anyway, I didn't hit the goal that I wanted to hit, I, I planned to read a lot of books and then didn't feel fantastic so I didn't end up reading as many as I wanted but I did get through a couple of books and I did really really enjoy them. The first book that I started to read that I actually didn't finish like together, like I read a couple of more books in between because it hit me a little bit more than I thought it was going to and that was The Last by Hannah Jameson. This focuses on 20 people in a Swiss hotel who are kind of the current only known survivors of nuclear war. Essentially the world has been bombed by multiple nuclear bombs. They're in this Swiss hotel, don't know what's going on in the world, can't get any reception, can't get hold of anyone. They just saw lots of things happening on the news and then all of that was taken away. So there's just 20 people left in this hotel. They then find a body in one of the water tanks in the hotel and they don't know if the murderer is still there and if, he, if the murderer is still there. It's trying to find the murderer before the murderer can find them. So this book is kind of murder mystery, crime, thriller with a little bit of post-apocalyptic action. And to be honest, the kind of being stuck in the hotel quarantine kind of thing made me feel really unsettled and genuinely was not expecting to feel as unsettled as I did. So I did have to read this book slowly. Also what I didn't know is that the body that is found is that of a child and that is not disclosed at any point. This is not disclosed like on the blurb or when you read up about the book and I think that that's a really important thing to disclose because obviously death in itself is a very upsetting subject and can be really really upsetting for lots of people but death of a child so you know some people that might be fine reading about death a death of a child could then be really really upsetting to them so I do just want to preface this by saying that, that is the body that they find and they do go into detail and they do kind of trying to figure out who she was and how she died so I will just say please go into this with caution if that is something which is really sensitive to you I am not someone that's able to deal with child death child true crime cases like I, I, I just can't do it there are lots of children in my family I have worked with children for years I cannot you know my friends have children I cannot 
fathom the idea, so it's something that I avoid. Even as a kid, I could never read a series of unfortunate events because I really didn't like the way that he treated the children. So I just think this is something that I wanted to preface if you do decide to pick this book up because I did not know about it before I started. I ultimately gave this book a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I think the concept is really clever, I think the way it's written is really clever, um, but I there were some things that which made it really kind of unsettling for me and I know that's a personal thing and something which might be fine for someone else and might make them might you know they might have a different rating but my rating is 3.5 stars. I then read The Colour Purple by Alice Walker and this book is absolutely phenomenal. This focuses on Celie who lives in the south of America and she at a very young age is raped by her stepdad. She ends up actually in birthing two of his children which he takes away and she's not allowed to see or raise or have any contact with. She then ends up in a marriage to someone that she doesn't want to be in a marriage with and she ends up having to say goodbye to her sister. Then she meets Shug Avery, a woman who has kind of takes life by the hand and goes for it and kind of pushes her own boundaries and she really helps Celie do that herself and kind of own her own life and take a stand and I think this book is absolutely amazing. I loved Celie so much. People treat her awfully, she's seen as like not smart when actually she is very much so. You know she is so strong, so brave, has lived this life where so many of these things have happened to her. She had to say goodbye to her sister without knowing if her sister was okay. Decisions have been made for her that she didn't have a say in. Uh, so much was taken from her but yet she is so strong and she lives through it and she goes through it and there's a really lovely quote which I'm going to completely butcher but it's along the lines of I may be ugly, I may be dumb, I may not be able to cook but I am here and I just think that is so enough in the first place the fact that she can go through so much and and, and still be there f sort of fighting and realizing that she wants to take a stand and reaching back out to her sister and having that reunion and actually saying to these men that have treated her so horribly you don't get to have that hold on me anymore and it's a really important book which focuses on all of those things but also race and family and I just think it's it's really, really good. Um, and I love this book. I read it straight up in one sitting. Absolutely adored it. I think it's really important, really, really good. And I cannot recommend it enough. Five out of five stars for The Colour Purple, absolutely. I then listened to the audiobook of Get A Life, Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. And this focuses on Chloe Brown, who has fibromyalgia and is chronically ill and she ends up one day almost dying, she almost gets hit by a car and she realises that since her diagnosis and since her life had changed so much she hadn't really had a life so she puts together a get a life list of all things she wants to do that she has never done and things that she thinks if her life then ended she'd be happy with it because she'd experienced these things and, and kind of getting her independence back. Now for those that don't know I have fibromyalgia um, as well as multiple other things that have impacted my life and I haven't always had these things. It is a very very specific type of thing to go from being able-bodied to disabled and it kind of the way it flips your life around is really hard to describe and I went from being a relatively healthy adult, you know, early adults, just starting my adulthood to spending a lot of my time in the hospital and using a walking stick. I've never seen that described the way that Talia Hibbert does in Get A Life Chloe Brown, which I absolutely adored. She even talks about little things like how fibromyalgia means that your body cannot regulate homeostasis, which it doesn't. My body does not do that. My body has not been able to do that for a long time. So even little things like that, I really, really love the way it was explored. However, this book was very smutty, I do just want to say that, and uh, smut doesn't really bother me, but I didn't know it was this smutty, so I do just want to, like, preface that, if it, what the hell is flying around, oh my god, 
Oh my god, there's like a big storm coming. Oh my god. Okay, I have the rest of this book and then one more book and then hopefully this storm's not gonna get insane while I'm filming. Oh my god, what is going in my house? So it was done really well, but yes, it's very smutty. So if that's something that is not comfortable for you, I would genuinely say don't read it because it was very smutty. There was a lot of smutty language, it was a lot. So I will just say, just because I know that that can make some people very uncomfortable and they don't want to read that, and it wasn't even just like a one off, it's quite common. Um, but I did think it was a really, really good exploration of fibro and chronic illness and how that impacts your life. Like that. The romance I think was really cute, it was very quick. I did think like I love yous were done very, very quickly. Um, but yeah, ultimately, I did really like it, and I think it's an amazing exploration of being chronically ill and fibromyalgia. And then finally I read Anger is a Gift by Mark Shearer. This focuses on Moss Jeffries. He is just trying to be a good son, a good student, a good friend, a good boyfriend. He's just got on into a new relationship. He's just met a guy and he's trying to kind of balance all of these things. However, his dad was killed by a police officer um, a couple of years ago. His dad was wrongfully targeted by police and was killed as a result of police brutality and his dad, not that even if he was the, like, person that committed the crime, should he have been killed because he shouldn't have been, um, but his dad wasn't even the person they were looking for. They just stereotyped. And Moss kind of wants to forget that. He doesn't want to be remembered for that. He doesn't want people to recognise him. He gets panic attacks. He's really dealing with his mental health. And then Moss's school, which is a school with a lot of, um, black kids in it and people of colour is suddenly like their funding is down, they're being subjected to random locker searches, just seems like they are being treated as criminals in their own school and I just think it's a really really interesting discussion and really really important. Uh, it has an amazingly diverse cast of characters, trans characters, non-binary characters, gay characters, lesbian characters characters of colour. What I really love about that is when diverse characters are not there just to kind of tick a box, they're there because that's an actual representation of people and the world and it's just a really good exploration of so many things, very important, really important discussions to be had about this book and I cannot recommend it enough. This is another five out of five stars novel. So yeah, so those are the books that I read in June and July. I'll be doing an August wrap up at the start of September as well which is exciting. I'm glad to be getting back into doing wrap ups and that kind of thing because I've missed doing them and I've wanted to just get back into it for a while and I'm reading a lot more now as well whilst you know things are kind of settling back down so I'm really happy to be sharing what I'm reading with you guys. I'd love to know what you guys have read recently. Please share them with me. Thank you for watching. Like I said if you guys are new here then I make videos a couple of times a week about books and fandom things so if you want to stick around and join us feel free to hit that subscribe button and turn on the little notification bell. And as usual all links to my other social medias and also my podcast are in the description down below. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you're doing really, 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 really well and I will see you next time. Goodbye!